Hello friends, in my this particular video, I am going to discuss analog and digital frequency and some important point related to frequency response of a filter, whatever I have discussed in my previous videos. So, suppose consider this particular equation x of t is equal to a sin omega t plus phi, a well known uh, mathematical equation for sign signal in continuous time, right? Where a is the peak amplitude, omega is an analog frequency or we can say real frequency which is represented in uh, radians per second, t is the time, continuous time and phi is the phase shift. Now, this particular expression is in continuous domain. Now, suppose I want to convert this particular expression in discrete domain. What we do generally? Correct. I think you have got the idea already. Suppose I have one continuous time signal. Now, what we do to get the discrete, discrete time representation? We multiply this, this x of t. Uh, suppose this is uh, one sinusoid type signal and we multiply with uh, x of t this particular signal which is basically impulse strain and the time gap between two successive uh, peak in the impulse strain is ts or we can say sampling time okay or sampling period also we can say ts or which is equal to 1 by fs or 1 by sampling frequency now when we multiply these two signal we will get this kind of sampled version of x of t continuous time signal which is basically this particular y of t which is multiplication of x of t and delta t impulse strain or we can say y of t is basically discrete time representation of x of t right now when you multiply this t basically y of t we are getting after multiplication of x of t with delta t and this is represented as we we can say y of t is equal to x of n capital t okay so that is the representation that is n is the integer and capital t or ts is basically sampling time so we can what i want to say we can write like this um here let me write y of uh, t representation is nothing but now x of n t s okay why because you just observe it very carefully that what is happening basically y of t is basically discrete time representation and it is taking only values corresponding to amplitude of x where it is where time is multiple of ts n is taking value uh, 0 1 2 3 and so on integer values so y of t is equal to x of nts we can say so in simple words we can say like this uh, if we want to get the discrete time representation of a continuous signal we have to replace the t by nts generally we do like this only all right so that's what i have done here suppose i have this particular continuous time signal x of t now if i want to get the discrete time representation i will replace the t by n capital t where n is integer and t is basically sampling time or we can say ts also or we can say 1 by fs also because sampling time is 1 by sampling frequency so we can get the discrete time representation is x of n capital t as a sin omega n capital t plus phi nothing we have done extra just i have replaced small t that is continuous time by n capital t to get the discrete values of time okay so now what we can do we can write like this x of n capital t that is discrete time representation of the signal is equal to a sin n omega plus phi what i have done here i have replaced this particular omega into t by this particular w omega symbol okay where this particular omega is equal to our actual frequency or real frequency or analog frequency into sampling time okay this particular omega is termed as digital frequency so now i hope it is clear what is digital frequency and what is analog frequency digital frequency is analog frequency multiplied by sampling time and this we achieve after sampling whereas analog frequency is this one which is basically our original frequency or real frequency okay 
So basically, our dis in case of discrete time signal, x of n is equal to a sin n omega plus phi, where omega is digital frequency, and this particular omega is analog frequency, right? Now comes the uh, concept in the uh, frequency response of a digital system okay this is very important understand it very clearly i have just discussed analog and digital frequency concept i hope the difference is clear now let us directly go to nyquist theorem what the nyquist theorem says the sampling frequency must be greater than equal to two times maximum frequency of our message signal so we can rewrite like this our message signal should range from 0 to fs by 2 that is 0 less than equal to f max less than equal to fs by 2 where fs is the sampling frequency now multiply 2 pi with the equation and you will get 0 less than equal to 2 pi f max less than equal to 2 pi fs by 2 2 2 will cancel each other in numerator and denominator and we will get this one 0 less than equal to 2 pi f max less than equal to pi fs so just consider this one 2 pi f max 2 into pi into frequency of our message maximum frequency of our message signal this is nothing but our actual frequency or analog frequency or real frequency which is measured in radian per second which is this one right a sin omega t plus phi this particular omega is 2 pi f okay so replaced by analog frequency omega so 0 less than equal to omega less than equal to uh, pi fs this should be range of our analog frequency now what should be range of our digital frequency let's compute that multiply uh, sampling time uh, in this equation and you will get 0 less than equal to uh, analog frequency multiplied by sampling time less than equal to pi into sampling frequency into sampling time now sampling frequency into sampling time will be 1 because sampling time equal to 1 by sampling frequency so here you can see that new numerator and denominator fs will cancel each other and we are getting this particular equation 0 less than equal to analog frequency into sampling time less than equal to pi and analog frequency into sampling time is nothing but digital frequency just now we derived see here digital frequency equal to analog frequency into sampling time so what we are getting the range of my digital frequency or point of interest of my digital frequency will be 0 less than equal to pi okay that range should be 0 to pi okay so for digital system whenever we deal with digital system digital signals the frequency range of interest will be 0 to pi all right now let us try to understand in the matlab code what is the significance of this particular theoretical idea already in my previous video i have discussed about moving average filter right so basically this particular numerator and denominator coefficients i am taking directly from moving average filter if you don't know about moving average filter please check the link given in the description because that concept is very very important to understand this particular concept okay what i have done clc clear all close all and here i have written the moving average filter and i want my intention is to get the frequency response okay of the filter now when i have talked and uh, discussed uh, about the frequency response or dtft i told you the periodicity is 2 pi right and the omega for which you have to plot either you plot from 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi because as periodicity is 2 pi so to get the complete idea of the response at least the 2 pi range you have to plot so you can choose either from 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi that is your choice i have told that time this concept but now what you have seen our original point of interest should be 0 to pi right so i am writing 0 to pi here okay so omega is 0 to pi and a equal to input enter the number that is uh, how many numbers average you want to take and then we are giving the numerator denominator coefficients and frequency we are using to get the frequency response and we are plotting the magnitude part and phase part right so let's visualize this control a evaluate selection enter the number suppose let me give eight so eight point moving average filter i want to get so what we are getting we are getting the uh, magnitude and phase plot of the moving average filter like this and from the magnitude response now try to understand from the magnitude response what we can uh, conclude see 
at low frequency the gain is very high and as the frequency increases the gain decreases so obviously we can say from the magnitude response that moving average filter is basically nothing but a low pass filter intuitively also we can say that moving average filter is a low pass filter because in my previous video you have seen that moving average filter removes the noise and makes our um, input very much smooth okay and obviously it is quite clear that whenever any system makes input signal smooth that means it is not allowing sudden change that means it is removing the higher frequency component that is that means this low pass filter here from the magnitude response also you can visualize that the particular system is low pass filter so moving average filter is basically one proper uh, representation of low pass filter and what is the relationship in between the theory whatever this we have discussed earlier and uh, now whatever we are implementing see if you are plotting from 0 to 2 pi then what will happen suppose let me give enter the number suppose i want 8 point average then we are getting like this so from this what you can see you are getting uh, at high frequency also it is uh, going like high you may interpret this in a wrong way but here why it is happening like like this there other reasons are there because the periodicity is 2 pi so it will uh, make another periodicity this concept i will discuss later but to understand the type of the filter as just now i have shown you that our point of interest of frequency should be 0 to pi okay so omega is 0 to pi and if i plot whatever response i will get suppose let me take five point average so we will get like this so as at low frequency this part obviously corresponding to low frequency and as the as we go this side towards pi okay as we move towards pi it will be high frequency okay so basically at low frequency gain is more so that uh, it is quite clear from the magnitude response itself we can conclude that moving average filter is a low pass filter all right one more concept suppose i want to implement high pass filter using moving average filter what we can do see idea is very simple from the low pass filter how you can get a high pass filter we subtract one from the frequency response right because if you observe the okay let me show you so if you observe the low pass filter frequency response it will be ideally like this and suppose this omega c is the cutoff frequency and as i told you 0 to 2 pi is our point of interest so this will be our low pass filter how high pass filter will look like high pass filter will be basically this one i am talking about ideal low pass filter so uh, this one i am taking as magnitude so uh, in case of high pass filter after the cutoff frequency it will allow the signal to go so basically if this particular range is pi what we are getting from 0 to omega c it will not pass any signal and from cutoff frequency to pi it will allow so this is high pass filter so from the magnitude response itself we can conclude that if we want to achieve the high pass filter from low pass filter we have to subtract the magnitude response of low pass filter from one okay you just consider one minus magnitude response of this you will get this particular response right so that's what let me do here what i will do i will subtract one from the frequency response of the low pass filter which is moving average filter now if i do evaluate selection suppose enter the number let me give eight itself and now you see what we are getting from the graph itself we can clearly conclude see at low frequency the gain is not much but as the frequency increases as we moving towards uh, pi from zero the gain increases okay so that this is nothing but one high pass filter representation and this is how you can form high pass filter using moving average filter i hope the concept of analog and digital frequency our point of interest uh, or frequency range in case of frequency response and uh, how to make a uh, high pass filter using moving average filter and the concept of low pass filter uh, in the moving average filter is clear to you this is all for my this video i will discuss some more important concept related to frequency response of a filter in my next upcoming videos thank you for watching